Okay. Uh, Dr. Sanjeev Mohanty, uh, he had, instead of ENT, had neck surgery, MGM Healthcare. Uh, this 60 year old uh, patient from uh, Dubai uh, came with a diagnosis of uh, a jugular, uh, glomus jugular tumor which is on, with, on an advanced stage and it, it was very vascular and uh, the only option was a very high profile surgery after an intervention, radiology intervention with uh, embolization which helped the surgery to be conducted. It was very laborious, 13 hours long but uh, thankfully the outcomes were excellent and the patient uh, recovered well without any neurological deficit or prolonged ICU stay. He is back on his track doing his normal physiological functions and absolutely back with a vengeance as normal as possible. And uh, uh, the entire team of uh, surgeons in our department along with uh, help from the neuroradiology department, anesthesiology, they helped to garner support in the OT training and the treating uh, timings right through with the very good cutting edge technology that we have here in the MGM Healthcare. And the operating room was fully equipped with any eventuality in case there was a problem intraoperatively. So we could uh, take care of the patient very well and he's actually flying back tomorrow back to his uh, uh, you know place of work and i'm very happy to share this with you all thank you i just like to share the experience i had since the moment i had this disease since last couple of years i was having the problem of hearing loss but i was least bothering for that because my left ear was perfectly okay, so I didn't bother much. I thought in the left side I can go for the next. So I didn't bother. The month of February, while I was going for a client meeting, I suddenly had bleeding from my right ear. Immediately I went to the hospital, specialist. They had a scan. We told that some flesh is growing inside, and we don't have high-level microscopic instruments over here and they suggested that you should go to Chennai. Meet Dr. Mohanty over there. He is good in this area one. You go and get it later over there. I immediately took leave and came here. But when I reached here, it was total corona. Nothing was moving on. I went to a couple of specialist hospitals in Chennai to discuss about it. My main intention was not to go for a surgery. Somehow it should be managed by medicines or some laser treatment in your students. But wherever I went, I was explained of the possible disabilities which are going to happen after the surgery. And the doctors who are trying to, instead of discussing about a safe surgery, they were trying to safeguard themselves for the outcome of the surgery that it will happen, it will happen, you will have my nurse right here, total possibility of us, total partial disabilities of many of the nerves, facial nerves. Everywhere I could find only the threatening other than the discussion of the same journey. Finally I thought I should talk to Dr. Munti. We took appointment with him. And we had a very long discussion. He totally explained about this and all likelihood of this, what will happen after the surgery, what are the worst case scenarios. And from the discussions I had with Dr. Mahanti, first time in my discussions with many specialists, I started gaining some confidence that yes, I'm seeing some commitment from this doctor and I should prepare myself for the surgery. Immediately I did say, okay. Then we had a discussion in my family. Then I decided that, yes, I should go for this. Next day I went to him and said, I am prepared for this. Then he explained how the, what is the stage of this tumor. It was almost next to danger. It was in D1 stage. 
D2 is the ultimate. He was in that stage. Still, I said, okay, what are the outcome? I'm prepared. He counted that he will do his best to see that the outcome, disabilities, or the side effects are as minimum as possible. I could not believe that next day after the surgery that I was able to sit on the bed. When I woke up, I started talking. Everybody was surprised. I had no, nothing, no paralysis or anything. I was speaking, I was able to drink water. No damage. I was expecting some problem with my eye nerves. I was expecting that my, my lips will go to the either side. And I won't be able to talk. I won't be able to swallow. Nothing happened. Just for six hours I was drinking water. After that you will not believe I was able to take solid food. I was told even after the surgery, couple of days you will have difficulties in swallowing. But after six hours, I started eating too. I smashed some degrees and started eating. It was a miracle. The dream came true for me. It was a second life to me basically. And after surgery, the type of service I received till I get discharged from this hospital. I don't have words yet. Fantastic. Within 16 days, I came out and I'm living a literally normal life as I was before the surgery. Early it was a two week journey which made all this miracle. I don't have words to say anything. It was a miracle done by Dr. Mohan. And I wish him long life to save many more patients like this. And I want this hospital to grow further and further and further for having such a kind of facilities and the kind of service they provide all staffs, starting from nurses to associate specialists, doctors, everybody. Perfect service one can dream of. Thank you. Specific uh, instrumentation, even the surgical outcomes are directly proportional to it. And each patient is different, like we all know. So this gentleman is a 60-year-old uh, uh, gentleman from Dubai. He's been working in the Middle East anyway for almost 20 years as an NRI, but uh, heart is from Chennai. Over the years, due to COVID, he procrastinated a little bit, but he had right-sided progressive hearing loss and breathing sensation, unprovoked bleeding from the right ear. So first he was hesitant to go for it, you know, some kind of evaluation, then he went for it. But when his headache became more, and then he started taking attention. And why do we talk about pelvis anatomy being difficult? All the major blood vessels, which runs from the heart to the brain, goes through the skull base. All the functions of our body, physiological functions like swallowing, speaking, eating, drinking, uh, breathing, smelling, everything goes through the skull base. And this unfortunate tumor is at that very end. And surgical access is difficult because you have to go through normal structures to reach the tumor. And as I mentioned here, the 360 degree feet, uh, the, I was talking of feedback, so it's all about the attachment around which you have to take care in a very close attend manner. So the pre-operative planning, as in all surgeries, we have to do a good clinical examination. In this particular case, because he had loss of hearing, we had a very clear audiological assessment as well. And radiology is the mainstay to know what level, what extent, and how bad is the tumor. Of course, anesthesia worker. And I've colored it, the preoperative tumor embolization. Early days, it was not practiced very, very clearly lack, because of the lack of expertise. Thankfully, in MGM, we have very good neurointervention radiologists. And that makes the surgeon's blood pressure and the anxiety quite lowered, in spite of the fact that it's a very difficult tumor to operate. And as you can see the tumor, if I go here, you can, this is the tumor. Can you see that the left side is perfectly all right? That is the tumor. And if you do a, we inject a little dye to see how vascular it is. You can see this whitish uh, marker that is all blood. It's completely from the blood vessels. 
So we embarked on our embolization techniques and you see how this is called a tumor blush. This is the tumor. The blood vessels go and completely nourishes the tumor. But the state of art by Ben Kathler and the way they did the angiography, you could see complete tumor blush vanishing after that. So it's basically making the job little sense of purpose. So this is the OT said everybody was engaged that day for the entire just a small matter of as it said, more than half a day, but it required a lot of effort from everyone, and that's what we call multidisciplinary <coughs> team effort. So as you can see the approach, this is the uh, uh, incision, that's the right here. And if you look at uh, the incision being given, just to give you them some pointers as to how the surgery was done. And uh, you can see from the brain, right up in the area of the cranium, it's going right down to the neck because we have to have a control on the major blood vessels. As you can see, through the ear, the tumor is popping out. And also, when you just opened it, you saw the tumor there. And this is after exposure of the tumor. This is the tumor that was, this is all blood vessels, remember? The entire thing is arising from the major blood vessels. And that tumor proliferates to reach this level. This was the excised specimen, completely in total, of course, after a very laborious effort. And why we were taking a little extra time, this is the